Once again, a warm welcome to you. Let's begin here. Tanzanian authorities have uh, confirmed the arrest of Tabo Besta, a fugitive from the South African justice system. Besta, dubbed the Facebook rapist for his crimes, is reported to have been arrested in Tanzania after escaping from the Mangawung Correctional Center in Bloemfontein in May 2022. SABC's Isaac Lukando has more for us. The whereabouts of runaway inmate Tabo Besta have been confirmed. South African media outlets were the first to confirm that he was in Tanzania and under police custody. The spokesperson for the Tanzanian police force, David Misime, has since confirmed the arrest of Tabo in the country's northern city of Arusha. Police say he was apprehended alongside Dr. Nandi Pamagudumana, his partner and traveling companion, and one Zakaria Alberto believed by some to be a Mozambican national. Authorities say communications of illegal nature are ongoing both locally and internationally. This is in line with an earlier statement by the South African authorities that the country's officials were headed to Tanzania to process Tabo's extradition. It is unknown when exactly the fugitive entered Tanzania or where he was headed to. What is known is that he has been on the run since his escape from jail became public last month. Isaac Lukando, SABC, Dar es Salaam. Meanwhile, a South African delegation will travel to Tanzania tomorrow to begin the extradition processes for Besta and Makudumana. Confirmed with all relevant authorities in Tanzania, which include the National Commission of Police in Tanzania and Interpol, that fugitives are being processed in the Tanzanian um, uh, criminal justice system. I have also had a telephone discussion and call with the Minister of Justice in Tanzania who has um, confirmed to us of their cooperation and willingness to help in the process to bring them to South Africa as speedily as possible. An official delegation from the South Africa comprises of senior officials from the police, justice and correctional services will depart for Tanzania tomorrow. They will be received and assisted by the Office of the High Commissioner in Tanzania, who is uh, representing South Africa there. We are confident that we will receive maximum cooperation from our sister nation, Tanzania, to assist us to bring these fugitives to justice. It was found when they have been arrested that they are in the country illegal. They were found, they were spotted by the people that are working with South Africa and uh, they were followed as they leave the hotel in this black S S SUV uh, and they were heading for the border of the other country they were leaving uh, they were leaving the the, the tanzania uh, actually were leaving dar es salaam and they were followed and the, until they were found in in arusha it was also discovered there that they have several uh, passports with different names. All right, let's uh, delve uh, deeper into this uh, story then. We are uh, joining us uh, now is Professor Kolofelo Rakubu, uh, who is uh, acting HOD, uh, Department of Safety and Security Management at uh, the Tswana University of uh, Technology. Prof, a very warm welcome to you and thanks very much for joining us here on SABC News. Good evening and good evening to the viewers. Prof, Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. Let's start by talking about the country's uh, poor management, if one can put it that way, of uh, correctional services. The minister uh, recently said that this whole situation is an embarrassment. Um, but more so, what does it say about how easily uh, criminals who perhaps have access to resources or, or money um, can maneuver and, and, and sort of, you know, jump the system? Uh, the perception that it also creates for other criminals or would-be criminals and the public in general. Um, it, it just tells a different story to what South African thought uh, correctional facilities in South Africa looks like. Um, it, it, it now reflects as if for one to go to jail is better to even uh, when compared to staying at home unemployed because you can you have all the luxuries in prison. You can even run a business. Mm. You can buy your way out. So remember, 
we're dealing with rational thinkers. Offenders are rational thinkers by nature. So now they are busy calculating. If I do hit and run, if I smash and grab, if I'm involved in cash transit, I might get with three million and I'll live my best life in prison. And somebody will think I'm in, I'm in prison, of which I'm not in prison. Mm. So this just tells what just just opened a can of worms with regard to what goes on in prisons. This definitely tests the justice system, but could this be a positive in that um, I would assume that there are lessons learned, but what lessons have been learned from this and, and, and could things then be made better from this situation? First lesson learned is that the privatization does not stop corruption mm -hmm. because South African thought um, cor most corrupt prisons are state-owned. From this, the experience is that on even the privatized one are uh, more corrupt. The second lesson is what? Our criminal justice system, particularly the functionality of, correct, of correctional centers, it has collapsed. Mm -hmm. There's no management there. Organized crime syndicates are running these centers on our behalf. So money, the third the third lesson is what? Money can buy whatever you want to get from prison. And again, it takes time for our own system to even reflect or tell South Africa of what really goes on into our prison. Because I don't believe correctional services became aware of the whole debacle last month, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. with the autopsy reports and yes. so forth, particularly with the possible escape, because it looks like they knew this was a well-kept secret. And which what? Now it makes South Africa more vulnerable because when you feel like correctional centers are there to um, house or take away offenders from communities, they don't necessarily take them away. They do just keep them safe somewhere and lie to victims. So it has instilled more fear and more frustration. So it will take South Africa quite some time and more multiple resources and multiple stakeholder engagement mm. when it comes to regaining trust, regaining understanding, and regaining um, having vision of our correctional centers because this requires a whole system review yeah. and which requires a lot of money as well. I mean, you know, you, you bring into into it all, you know, the, the department, for example, like Home Affairs, you know, where you, you, would, you would think that a death certificate would, you know, a, a give light into a situation. What do you think about this disjointed um, approach by the uh, police ministry, home affairs, correctional services, justice department, um, you know, when, when dealing with uh, as, as situations like this. I mean, these are departments that should be you know, working like an, a well-oiled machine, that should be working uh, together in synergy. But clearly this, this, this wasn't the case here. It wasn't the case, every man for himself. If correctional services, for example, suspected a foul play, yeah. they could have um, liaised with sister departments that deals with issues of victim empowerment and victim safety. Mm -hmm. But it's like everybody for himself and everybody has to watch their back. So th th there's no coordination. There's no integrated approach. It is there on paper, but in true reality, everybody does their own thing. You can look into how this man escaped or how this man reached Tanzania. It, it, it tells a whole different story of how level of organized crime and how you can buy your way out into another country. Mm. They are saying their, their passport, for example, were not stamped. That talks to other administrative monopoly and discretionary powers yeah. that are available at these customs and, and, and in our borders where we give certain individual more powers to take particular decision. And with that, we forget long-standing issues of salaries and working conditions that when Tabo Besta, for example, approaches such with a lot of money, mm. obviously such a person due to working conditions and lack of resources, they are likely to allow such. And yeah. another factor, pressure from organized crime. So I you should realize that Tabo did not work alone in this one. And I, I was wondering if we were going to find him alive because this yeah. implicates a whole lot of departments. Imagine how many officials at customs yeah. he had to pay, how many um, officials in South Africa he had to pay. And this also correlates to, because South Africa has been questioning how did the Guptas, how did the Bushiri issue, yes. how did they leave South Africa? Now he tells us what? It's easier to leave South Africa 
it yeah. is so much easier to, to leave South Africa. And that and, is and, why. And I want to, I want to, I want to actually expand yeah. on this particular point. I mean, you talk about uh, the fact that you know the, it implicates, it possibly implicates so many people. Do you have faith that you know heads will roll because it's clear that they they were never operating uh, alone, Besta and um, and and the doctor. Um, you know, you, you're talking about uh, the, the the public needing to. Um, begin to trust again and, and how can we do so when we see these kinds of uh, incidents and I suppose the, the start would be for heads to roll and see that there are repercussions but do you have faith that that, that, that will actually happen? With the way um, the media attention this story received South Africa is waiting and the law enforcement should not even play dirty here. Mm -hmm. South Africa should know every little detail and every step to be taken when it comes to uh, uh, making heads warm. Remember, one, how did he get out of prison? Approximately 20 officials should be held accountable, mm -hmm. approximately, yeah. and leaving the country, approximately, how many borders did he cross? How many... Uh, uh, areas, the hotels, and so forth. Yeah. So there are many, many. Now I, I I don't have faith because the way it was protected from the beginning, I doubt. Why would you? Because they realized the taboo was not there, but they kept quiet. It's only after that story broke out. It's yeah. only after that magnificent uh, journalism uh, that was shared with South Africa, the yeah. groundbreaking report, that now people started coming to say, yeah, we have an autopsy report. Yeah. And now we wanted to know, since he was declared dead on the home affairs, who went there and uh, wh what is written there, natural cause or what? And again, protection, the, the amount of protection, it shows that this is deeper than we think. This is a syndicate because for Tabo to even uh, be able to cross the border, mm. it's what? Facilitation of multiple stakeholders. This is an institution. We might be talking of Tabo Besta, but this is an institution because mm. the story doesn't even make sense. Um, this is a new, um, if we were to, to, to analyze crime, this is a new pattern of crime analysis where now it involves extensive intelligence mm. and normally we will be told of uneducated people, females being involved on in loot into criminal activities. Now we're getting a different angle of, of a degree holder yeah. being part of this. So you can imagine, I wouldn't be surprised if um, um, figures, Political figures yeah. and leaders in their own rights are involved in this one. Yeah, interesting indeed. And we'll certainly, of course, keep an eye on the story and uh, this, uh, this case. Prophet, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so very much uh, for weighing in on the story Thank for you, us. Baby. All right, have a great evening. That's uh, Professor Kolofelo uh, Raku, who acting uh, HOD at the Department of Safety and Security and Management at the Swan University of uh, Technology. All right.